Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour back in our Father's Word. Chapter 12, the great book of Revelation. You know, this is a, a unique chapter in as much as it, it covers more time, the period of time, than any other chapter in the Bible itself. It goes from the first earth age throughout this age and even down to the first day of the millennium. Uh, and it's a fantastic chapter placed in here following the two witnesses and the seventh trump to give you another warning to draw it down and tell you exactly what's going to happen in the chronological order in which it happens and who does what. So that makes it a very interesting chapter Having said that, chapter 12, the great book of Revelation, meaning the uncovering, let's uncover it, let's open it up, and let's take a good look so that you have understanding and you know what tomorrow brings. Chapter 12, verse 1, with that word of wisdom from our Father, and it reads, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Where was this? In heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And of course in the Star Bible this is the, this is the twelve main ones and, um, th that make up that twelve. Always set in God's overall plan of salvation. It's the zodiac. Uh, and how precious it is. And of course she's symbolic of Mother Israel. Verse 2. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. In other words, the birth of a new age coming. Father knew it. There were no surprises to our father. Verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Where was it again? In heaven. And behold, a great, great red dragon. This is none other than Satan himself having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Now, one of the reasons you know this was in the first earth age is in this earth age, he will have the same political makeup. I'm talking governmental. Only instead of seven crowns, there will be ten. And, but here in the first earth age, there was only seven. And he will utilize that same governmental in the one group world government system to deceive the world if it were possible. How did he make out in heaven and the heavenlies, earth included? Verse 4, listen to it, it tells you. And his tail drew a, the third part of the stars of heaven, that's the children of God, and did cast them to the earth. He caused them to be thrown down to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now we transfer to Mary and the coming Messiah in, in, within this earth age. He caused them, why? Because of his deceiving a third of God's children. As it is written in Ezekiel chapter uh, 28 verses 18 and 19. He drew a death sentence himself, but God didn't want to destroy a third of his children. That, that's, a, that's a hard thing to swallow. What does it take for you to kill one of your own kids? You don't, okay. So God instead destroyed that earth age. In other words, his deception caused them to be born in the flesh made in the exact image we were there, born in the flesh, innocent, to make your mind up whether you're going to follow Satan or whether you're going to follow our Heavenly Father. Choice is yours. And that's why he sends you this letter. 
is so that you're not ignorant of the events whereby you choose your own way in the way you should go. And there you have it that, um, that he, he was waiting. Verse 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule, what was he to do? To rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. You don't need a guess to know who that was. There's only one that sits at the right hand of God. There is only one who resurrected from the dead. There is only one who is our comforter, who sits at the right hand of God. And, and you know where he is. And, and so it is that God's plan motors own. There's only one person that was to rule all nations, tongues, and languages. It's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Verse 6, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had the place pre prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. You can get a little better understanding of this by understanding how to evaluate the days of Daniel, for that's how you figure these days. And um, if, if you were to go to the seventh chapter of the great book of Daniel, you would find where some were cast down and the temple was not cleansed for 2,300 days, which goes from somewhere around 1400 B.C. up until about this generation. So how fantastic it is that our Father gives us these truths to observe to absorb and to know <clears throat> who's on that throne. He is. He's still there, and he very much hears you. <clears throat> what is that wilderness? Well, it's the tribes that scattered, the 12 tribes, those 12 stars scattered over the Caucasus Mountains uh, some 600 years B.C. by the Assyrians, later settling Europe, then migrating through um, Canada and in the Americas, and so they, uh, which was a wilderness. You know, many have a difficulty understanding this nation, which is a superpower of superpowers, is barely over 200 years old. I mean, it, it, it is really a short timer compared to Egypt and some, a few other nations. And, and I use Egypt because God promised it would always be a base nation, and it always has been. Many other nations come and go. Names change and so forth. But not Egypt. Why? Because God declared it. And what we have happening then with that woman um, scattered, verse 7, and there was war in heaven. Now, where, where is this now? This war is in heaven, not earth. Michael, that's the archangel Michael, and his angels fought against the dragon. That's one of Satan's names. And the dragon fought in his angels. You know, that would be quite a war. Eight, and prevail not. Satan lost. Neither was there place found any more in heaven. Uh, he's out of there. This is why that you have silence and the 8th chapter of Revelation, verse 1, in heaven for half an hour. Half of the hour of temptation <clears throat> when he was cast from heaven. Well, where did they cast him to? Right here on good old Mother Earth. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to. And that's when he makes his trip as the false messiah. Verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent, here is his name from the garden, the seducer of women, <clears throat> his role in that, called the devil, he that would deceive all peoples, and Satan, he that would tempt Christ if he could in the wilderness. All the same person, which deceived the whole world. How, mu how much of that was it? He deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. 
And here we know why Christ would say in Matthew 24, it's going to be just like it was in the days of Noah with the fallen angels. They're going to be giving and taking in marriage again with the daughters of Adam. And, and so it will be. You can count on it. And, and this is why Paul would teach in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 10, a woman should keep herself covered with Christ over her head, not her hair, but with Christ because of, in verse 10, the angels. What angels? These. These that are coming. They will be cast out. And um, uh, they are already sentenced to die. And as we learned in the last chapter, that those 7,000, which are the equivalent, the negative of 7,000 elect, or the 7,000 wicked ones, written of in Jude, that are already in chains for, of destruction. They will be destroyed when that seventh trump sounds, um, as, as um, we learned in that last chapter. Uh, slaying of men 7,000 in verse 13 of chapter 11. And, and so it is. It's going to be as it was in the days of Noah. Do you, you know, as it was in the beginning, so it shall be at the end. When you look at what happened, and Christ says it's going to happen again, that was an example to keep you from being deceived. So observe and be watchful. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, whose, which accused them before our God day and night. I mean, that's what Satan does. Did you see that? That's your little old elect down there, God? Did you see what they just did? Well, how, how, do, how do you know Satan has that ability? Well, have you never read the great book of Job? You know, Job means persecuted. And if you ever have an example of how a true Christian can be persecuted, you've got it in Job. An example set forth. An example for you to learn by. So you're going to have it on the screen. Job chapter 1, verse 6, what does it say? And uh, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. You see, he's also a son. <clears throat> but he's still the accuser. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest, comest thou? And then Satan answered the Lord, and he said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Been down there traversing and observing what's going on. Verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and escheweth evil. He hates it. Hates evil. So here you have a type in Job. You could not get Job to deny Almighty God. You could not get him to turn away from God. Why was he blessed so much? Because he loved God and God loved him. He earned. You know, he was a very rich man. Why? Because he deserved it. You, there is no, you never should apologize for the blessings of God, wealth. He takes care of his own. And he gives one what they can handle. But here old Satan, he says, hey, he says, God says, what, what do you think about him? Hey, just give me your opinion of my boy Job, who meant, meant persecuted. Next verse, please. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord, and he said, Doth Job fear God for naught? You think there's not a reason for this? That's, this is Satan's way of operating. Okay. Verse 10. Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and hast and his substance is increased in the land. 
And when, when you love God, he places a wall around you if you ask for it. It's his promise. Have you claimed it? Or do you just float around out there carelessly? Satan's saying, I can't, I can, you know, do you think that um, I can't get to him for no reason at all? I can't get to him because you won't let me. Now, you know, there's a good lesson within that, especially in these end times when God has said, touch not mine anointed. You can't go near them. And then people shake in their boots about the end times when they have that hedge around them, if you're one of God's elect, if you know the truth, if you have the seal of God in your forehead. You cannot be deceived by that loafer. No way. <clears throat> so what happens then? Verse 11, Satan continues, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Do you know something? Job was in such bad straits that his wife even told him once, why don't you just curl up and die? His own wife. But he never, never cursed God. He said, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. And I love our Father, and I'm going to stay with him. Verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. <clears throat> Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. He, he destroyed everything. Sat that, uh, Satan destroyed everything that Job had when God removed that wall. <clears throat> Job still did not curse God. Job still did not turn on God. And, and what a perfect example in that great book of Job that 38 chapters of good friends, weren't even Israelites, foreigners, came over to advise him, knowing for this to happen, Job did something wrong. Not so. Job did nothing wrong. It's just that God even to tempt Satan, removed the wall. Knowing, he knew Job. He knew Job would never turn on him regardless of what. Satan could do whatever he wanted to to him. But he knew Job would not turn on him. You know, this is why God chose his elect in the first earth age. Do you know why? Because they stood against that rebellion when a third were drawn by the tail of the dragon, you stood, you earned the right to know and to understand and to detest Satan and his lies, his blowing smoke, fire and brimstone. You're too intelligent for that, too intelligent because you have the simplicity of the word of God and knowing God protects his own, big time. So here, but 38 chapters of ratchet jaw you ever heard a ratchet jaw? Boy, they're good at it. They're going to tell you what is wrong. Okay. When you should know if you're familiar with the word. Finally, in the 38th chapter, Job, uh, after listening to these numbskulls, God appears and said, Get up off the ground, gird yourself, stand up, and act like a man. None of this poor me baby stuff. When you girt yourself, you're ready for war, okay? You're ready to do battle. In other words, you act like a man against Satan. Don't let him make a fool out of you. And, and then God said, you, you think you have a, you've done so much. Where were you when I put all these planets in their proper place? When I even put this earth where it is? That's an awesome thought for a mere man to try to comprehend. Where were you, Job, when my sons and laughed and rejoiced in the first earth age? Where were you? God knew where he was. And so it is that God protects his own, and Satan is that adversary, always finding something wrong and, and always accusing. That's what his name is, and that's what he does. So don't, uh, when you have the devil... When you have Satan, when you have the dragon, all the serpent, all these names that 
Satan played a role in, in deceiving people, don't let him deceive you. He will come as the false Messiah instead of Christ. That's the main number one thing he's looking forward to. See that he doesn't snag you. Okay, now let's go with the next verse, returning to chapter 12, the great book of Revelation. We pick it up with verse 11, and it reads, And they, after he was cast out on earth, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. How did they do that? By the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Satan is death. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. I came to this earth, Christ said, to, to be crucified, but to destroy death, which is to say the devil. You're going to be delivered up for, for him for a testimony. That's in the plan, and that's the purpose, and rejoice in it. Praise God. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice, and you should. Ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Five months. You've already been told from chapter 9. Five months. In other words, that seven-year period divided into two three-and-a-half-year periods is, d is shortened to a five-month period into two, two-and-a-half month periods. That's the hour of temptation. Why? As it is written in Mark 13, for the elect's sake. So he's here when he's cast out, and he will be vicious as far as deception is concerned. He's not going around hurting people except spiritually. He will cause you to lose your very soul if you listen to him. Verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. He's going to do it. So big deal. Okay, he's, he's a dead man walking. And Christ, as it is written in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven, and I give you power over scorpions, serpents. I give you power even over all your enemies, including Satan. So what do you got to worry about? He's going to try to persecute the woman. That is to say Israel, Mother Israel. Verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the serpent. The first two and a half months, no sweat. Observe, take it all in. The wilderness will protect you. Got nothing to worry about. And as it was written in chapter 1, I'm sorry, I'm going to correct myself. In chapter 2, as it is written, no one, when he was addressing the church of Smyrna, he said, no one will have over 10 days. That's as an individual. As a nation, it'll be, it'll be five months split to two and a half months. But no individual will have more than 10 days trial. And for you then, that would be the end of it. Just witness, testify, and he'll keep going smoking the people, blowing smoke, fire, and brimstone to deceive as many as he can. It means lies. Pouring out of his mouth like honey. You know, it'll be okay. And, and so it is um, that Satan has his own little traits. Don't ever fall for it. <clears throat> God sees that she's protected. Verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. The flood of lies. Do, do you remember you remember back um, by these, it, I'm, I'm going to be reading from chapter 9, where you're given the five-month period. What came out of their mouths? Verse 18, by these three were the third part of men killed, deceived, if you would, spiritually. 
by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths, Satan and his own spewing forth lies. Well, many people have been, they've watched <clears throat> prognosticators that, well, it's going to be vicious, the end. The world's going to be destroyed, especially your little uh, global warming quacks would have you think that uh, there's such destruction. Just the opposite. That's why so many people are going to be deceived. Peace, love, or, uh, harmony. Unfortunately, it's towards Satan. But they don't know the difference. Why? They don't have the seal of God in their forehead to know Satan comes first. The whole world wonders after him. It's going to happen. Why? Because of his lies. He, he is an expert at it. His method of operation begins always with telling you how wonderful you are. This is why you want to be real careful when one of his own comes up to you, start, they, they begin to tell by telling you what a wonderful person you are, how intelligent, how kind, how reassuring, and what a good, good friend. But, that's the big word, but you need to follow this belief. Now, many might say, well, how do you know this woman is made up of Christians? How, how do you know <clears throat> that these, there's a lot of religions in the world. How, how do you know that we're talking here about this woman being Christians? How, how can you tell? Well, you're not dense, right? So you knew back in verse 5 that she brought forth a man-child and he would rule all nations with a rod of iron. That's Christ. That's Messiah. And if you love him and believe him, then you're a Christian. You're a Christ man. So we're talking about Christians here. <clears throat> and make no mistake about it. There's only one Messiah. There's only one Christ, the true Christ. All the fakes coming, and he claims to be, but he is a fake. He's, he lies through his teeth. And he will deceive many, many people. Verse 16, hang on. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. In other words, God always takes care of his own. <clears throat> many might say, well, I, I just don't know. You know, that, that seems like a parable or a proverb to me. Well, that, look back in history. I could give you some types. I could give you some types where somebody's little house decided to, they could do what they wanted to, but they choose to follow God. And in another place where the earth opened and swallowed over 100,000 people, got rid of them. The earth is a wonderful thing. God created it for his habitation and for ours. Why? How can you? How do you know that? Well, as it is written, that uh, in in the great book of Isaiah, that he created this earth to be inhabited, because he intends to inhabit it himself. When we get to chapter twenty-one, you learn and know that that uh, he sets his own twenty-four, 20, twenty-one in verse twenty-four. He's going to set his own throne up right here on earth. He's, he's coming here. We're not going somewhere else, as some people would tell you. That's part of Satan's deception, to, to get you to think you're going to fly somewhere other than here. All you're going to do is be transformed into a spiritual body. Christ is returning here for this Lord's Day, the millennium. And at the end of the millennium, the full Godhead returns to this earth, de jure. De jure, de facto means you control it, but you may have taken it by force. De jure means rightfully, totally, and solely his own. It's his. It's just like the souls, as it is written in Ezekiel 18.4, all souls belong to me. They're his to do with as he chooses. He can send them to hell, or he can give them eternal life. And he's always fair. You get what you got coming to you. So the earth, through our Father, protects its own. But you might look to the earth for a little protection. She's good to us. 
We came from the earth. Our, our flesh bodies are earthen. Everything we consume at one time or the other, that is, if, if you partake good food, it was growing from the soil. It originated from the soil. Okay. And, and uh, why? Because we are soil. From, from the clay, <clears throat> we came, formed, created by Almighty God in the image we were there. How precious it is, good old Mother Earth taking care of her own. Let's finish the chapter, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, always is, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, that remnant that will never cow cow to him, that remnant that will never bow to him, that remnant that always speaks the truth that scalds him. which keep the commandments of God. How do they do this? They keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. They have the word of God. They have the seal of God in their forehead. They are Christ men, meaning they are Christian. And those Christians will overcome. They will have that victory. Hey, there is one great tribulation coming, and that's what this chapter basically is telling you is the tribulation of Antichrist. He's going to be cast literally out upon us, and he's coming in peacefully and prosperously, as Daniel repeats over and over, so you wouldn't be deceived. But to listen to him, you know, he pays your bills. He buys votes. He makes deals behind closed doors. He is a louse. Okay, let, let me tell you something. It's like you might liken it to a skunk. You let a skunk get in your house, government in or otherwise, and you're going to be a long time getting the stink out of it. Okay. You want to be very careful. Satan is operating, and his actual coming, his appearance is not all that far away. All right, don't miss the next chapter. Bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the mark of the beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. And there we are. Back again. Let's have the 800 number, please. 1-800-643-4645. That number is good from Puerto Rico, throughout the U.S., Alaska, Hawaii, all over Canada. Spirit moves. you got a question, you share it. Won't you do that? Please never ask a question about a particular reverend, denomination, or organization. We will not judge people. Why? Because God is judge. He keeps score every day, all the time, every instant. And he knows what's happening. And he takes care of business. So let him be the judge. You just discern and know who you should fellowship with and so forth. Those of you that listen by short wave, it's always a pleasure hearing from you. And your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address. It's always a privilege to hear from you. And now if you've got a prayer request, you don't need the number, you don't need an address, you just need to let God know you love him. That's what he wants from you. He doesn't want your burnt offerings, Hosea 6.6. 6. He wants your love. That's why he created you is for his pleasure. And what pleasures him is for you to declare that love and stay in his test the testimony that he gives you, his word. Father, around the globe we come, we ask that you lead, guide, direct, Father, 
touch in Yeshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Okay, and Michelle from Tennessee. Michelle, you are not responsible for what happened to you as a child. Okay, It is the molestor that is responsible, not you. It is never the victim that carries the sin. It's the aggressor. So when you let, the, and the Lord loves you, all you have to do is to receive that love, but return it, okay? And, um, and don't worry, all things are made right when that moment comes that our Father uh, is in control. So, and when you repent, it's all washed away anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. So don't keep bringing it up. Rejoice in him. Be happy. He loves you. Uh, uh, B.B. from Wisconsin, could you tell me where in the Bible it tells the Lord forgives us for how many times? I know I read it, but I can't find it. Thank you for reading the Bible on television most every day. Just just call me B.B. if I'm lucky enough to get this answer. Well, this is your lucky day, girl. You, you made the roster, okay? Matthew chapter 18, verse 22 is what you're looking for. Seven times 70, that's 490 times a day. Um, Manning, Katie, rather, from Utah. My question is, we will be in flesh bodies when the Antichrist comes, and when the true Christ comes and his feet touch the ground, in an instant we will be in our spiritual bodies. Will we be aware of this at once? Absolutely. You can't help it. You know, when you're in these flesh bodies, if you're standing up, you, you have um, a considerable weight on the bottoms of your feet pushing between the bones and the flesh that's called the soles of your feet. I mean, there's pressure there. And, and uh, simply the ailments that you pick up, the um, uh, weaknesses, that's all gone. Absolutely, there is nothing there that would infringe upon your comfort. So naturally, you're going to recognize it. What a, what a time that's going to be, and we look forward to that. Daryl from South Carolina. How can you dogmatically, how can you say dogmatically that all races were created on the sixth day and then created Adam and Eve? How is it then that Adam is called the first man and Eve the mother of all living? Also, everyone except Noah and his family were all killed in the first flood, so whence came all the various races of the earth? Oh, you're really sharp, aren't you? Real sharpie. You know, um, wh what are you going to do uh, if you were to be able to read the Hebrew manuscripts? you would note the races were created on the sixth day. But on the eighth day, he created Eth Ha'adam, different man, through which Christ would come. And from the helix curve, the DNA, the curve it is in the Hebrew, mistakenly translated rib, and not so, um, but that curve was taken from him and Mother Eve was created. You see, through Eve, through Mother Eve, would come the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're not living if you're not in Him. You don't have life if you're not in Him. Therefore, Eve can easily be said she's the mother of all living. And if you've never read your Bible, if you never read Genesis chapter 6, where Noah was told, take two of every flesh aboard the ark, and hey, are you asleep? Look around you. The races are all here. How did they get here? Exactly the way God said they would. Uh, Richard from, Rachel, rather, from Tennessee. When the Antichrist comes the earth at the, to earth at the sixth trump, will people be allowed to watch programs such as Shepherd's Chapel, or will it be forbidden to have Christian messages showing across the globe. Oh, there's going to be Christian messages showing across the globe, but you 
God's elect are going to be delivered up before the false one and tried. And those trials will be made public. We'll find that out in the very next chapter of Revelation, chapter 13. And that is the true word of God, the Holy Spirit speaking through you. A lot of people almost err when they wonder, well, when am I going to testify and when am I going to... You're not going to. The Holy Spirit is going to do it through you. God is in control, not you. So you want to know and give way that whatever he says at that time, I'm talking about the true father, not the fake. Whatever the true Father gives us, for it is not we that speak, but the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, as it is written in Mark chapter 13. Edmund from South Carolina. Um, I have a question. You said Cain was not Adam's son, but in Genesis 4, 1, God's word says he was. No, it doesn't. You're reading it that way, but that's not what it says. So where does the word of God say he was not? Would you, would you send the verse and prove this? Well, I'd be happy to. What he, it, it is true that in 4.1, Adam finally knew his wife and she conceived. But do you know who that child was? Abel. She had already conceived back in chapter 3, verse 15 of the serpent seed. This is why you will, and, and when you read chapter 4, verse 2, the word again, sakha, in the Hebrew tongue, is continued. When a woman continues in labor after giving birth to one child, she's giving birth to a twin, identical or fraternal. In this case, it was fraternal. Because when you read then Cain's genealogy is in the fourth chapter, Adam's genealogy is in the fifth, and you will not, I repeat, will not, find Cain in Adam's genealogy because he was not Adam's son. But if you want to know who Cain's father was, you can read St. John in the New Testament, chapter 8, verse 44, and it will identify the father of Cain. No ifs, no ands, no maybes. Or if you need a second witness in from the New Testament, go to Matthew chapter 13 in Christ's own words in verse 35, 36, 37, where he's explaining the parable of Satan planting the seed, his children. Uh, Angela from Texas, question uh, from, for Jean, my mom wants to understand what Jesus meant in Luke 23, 28, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, weep for yourselves and for your children. Please explain. Well, be, because of the deception that was coming, okay, and he knew that, he said, if they, he continues on, let me say a little more about that verse. He continues on and said, if they will do this to the green tree, what do you think they will do to the dry? Meaning, if they will do this to my flesh body, what do you think they're going to do to my transfigured body, transformed body? Uh, the Holy Spirit. Ridicule, disbelief, and many, many things. And... Um, uh, people should weep for the deception that is in this world. Christ had it made. He was going to the throne of God. That's why he did it. You know, he, you cannot help but remember what he said there, weep not for me, and then go back to Isaiah where it would say, blessed are those that are barren, that did not bear, that means were not impregnated by the false messiah, but stayed true to their own husband, which is Almighty God. Have you ever read it? It's written, Ishai in the Hebrew tongue, our husband. Uh, Cletus from New York, where do you go when we, where do we go when we help our loved ones before the final judgment? Uh, you could only be talking about one place in God's word, uh, uh, and that is Ezekiel chapter 44 along about verses 20 through 25, where it says, if you happen to be one of God's elect, and in paradise, yet in the millennium, when people are being taught, if you see a relative, brother, sister, unmarried, mother, father, that didn't make it, that as one of God's elect, you have the authority to go there and help them. 
you can read of it in Ezekiel 44, but when it says the dock, that's transliterated rather than translated. To translate it rather than transliterate it is to say, instead of the dock, the just or the upright or elect. Lou from Louisiana, I enjoy your teaching. You're the first preacher that my spirit agrees with, and I like the way you present God's word. Well, I must commend you. You're a very good judge of character. Okay. I just thank you for the compliment. I appreciate it. Anytime you teach God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, give God all the credit. For he did a fantastic job of bringing us the truth. And all you have to do is to repeat that truth chapter by chapter and verse by verse. That's what people want to hear. What saith the Lord? Thank you for the compliment. Lynn from Arkansas. Why or how could the rapture theory of the 1830s have caught on so, um, so broad an area as to have most of the world believing falsely? Do they believe before this time the truth of the Antichrist uh, coming first? They didn't know about it. They still don't. Most, pe 90, mo most people, most Christians do not know that the Antichrist comes first. Why? Because what they're taught. They're taught, you don't even have to understand the book of Revelation. You're going to be gone. And it's a lie. Unfortunately, I, I want to be careful how I say this, but truth is truth, and sometimes truth can hurt. But in part, it's part of Satan's lies, blowing smoke, to get people off guard, ready to receive him. Um, and uh, they're ready to fly. I mean, they're going to jump in his wagon without asking any questions because he is supernatural. As we'll, we'll learn in the next chapter, the miracles that he performs in the sight of people is awesome. This is why Jesus would say in Mark 13, I've got to shorten the days or there would be no flesh saved. That's, that's how convincing he is. And so um, that's the way it goes. So it, it spreads because people, um, how do I want to say this? I don't want to say lazy, but people like to believe an easy way out. They've got to have a little security blanket. It's a little difficult maybe to put all of the scripture together with understanding and clarity, but that's what brings forth clarity is, is understanding the whole letter. If they can be handed a little bundle, blankie, and they can tuck that little blankie under their arm and just hang on to it. Don't teach me about the book of Revelation or anything else because I'm going to be gone. Gone to hell if you're not careful. You know, this is why Jesus would say, I don't want you if you've messed with him. Then you better learn who he is and the fact that a child can count. He comes at the sixth trump. Christ in no way, shape, or form returns until the seventh. So you got to go through it, like it or lump it. I just hope you have the seal of God in your forehead and you become a champion of your people to do what he would have you do. Okay, I am, this is Gene from Nebraska. No, Michigan. Um... I read in Northeast Street as Nebraska. Sorry about that. Michigan, Jean. I am a disabled woman. I try to help care for my parents and do things for them. I also help out my sister who's a teacher. I take her dogs out and help when she's behind. I was wondering, would this be considered God's work? I also watch over our elderly neighbors who's, uh, who is a World War II vet and help those I can. Now, that's the Lord's work, and, and that's uh, setting a good example as a Christian and what a Christian should do. Good neighbor. And uh, a good neighbor is a valuable thing. And to be handicapped yourself and still caring for your parents, I think that's fantastic as well as your sister. Joe from California. Can we be condemned for attending a church that believes in the rapture even though we don't? I never tell anyone or indicate where someone should go, should go to church. I, I think it is wrong for any minister to tell someone where they should or shouldn't go to church. 
I, I believe God's elect have, have a purpose. It could be that God has a purpose for them attending that church, maybe to bring one soul out of it, out of deception. But see, that's God's business. It's not, man has no way of knowing that. So every entity, as one of God's elect, I am certain that God directs them. Now, if the conviction becomes very strong that you're in a wrong place, then you can believe that conviction is the Holy Spirit. If not, there, there's probably a purpose for it. And, and so I never tell anybody where they should or should not go to church. I do say one thing, that a person that has the seal of God in their forehead wants to be very aware of the second epistle of John. I'll say it again. The little short second epistle of John tells you how you should and should not treat spirits. So, um, and I'll leave it with that. Um, Gwendolyn from Maine. I was reading Daniel 7, 13, and 14, and I don't want to be, sh and I want to be sure that I'm understanding it. Quote, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Is this one like the Son of Man talking about, or is it talking about Satan? Uh, keep reading. It says, and he rules forever and ever. That, that sets it apart, okay? There's only one that's going to rule forever and ever. It's the true one, okay? Not the fake. It's talking about the true. Finish the, finish the um, scripture, and the forever and ever identifies for certain beyond a doubt who it is, okay? Uh, Linda from California. I have, I have heard you say that in the end of the first earth age, Catabol, that father destroyed all the cities, all the animals, and all men. It is my understanding that none of God's children have been destroyed as yet, and the first time will be when the 7,000 fallen angels are destroyed at the second advent. You're absolutely correct. God, rather than destroy children, destroyed the earth age. All he was doing was destroying the age and bringing in a new age of learning. And, um, and you're right, that uh, 13th verse of that chapter uh, is when that transpires. Who are the men you speak of as being destroyed? And did Father destroy only the form they were in at that time or not their spiritual bodies? Read Jude, which it only has one chapter. Verse 4, read, read 1 through 6. Those that left their first habitation, meaning the fallen angels that fell, Nephilim, coming from the Hebrew prime Napa, fallen ones. Okay, that they, they blew it right there. They they threw away their op opportunity of salvation when when they um, left heaven and came to earth and seduced women rather than being born of her, as it is written in uh, Genesis chapter six. Um, Kitty from Arizona. Um, I, I know that the Bible tells us to get along with our neighbors, and if it is possible, does it apply to family members? Your home is your castle. Okay? Do not allow anything in your home that isn't pleasing to you and to God. Okay? You, even a relative, you might, if a relative tries to take advantage of you, if they are of a different persuasion and will not listen to you, or if they try to pound on you their so-called religion, then you need to make a note of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and begin reading with verse 6. You don't have to take them in. You don't have to to put them up. You don't have to be an enabler. You don't exactly treat them as an enemy, but you correct them, give them an attitude adjustment as a relative. But you don't have to up Your home is your castle. If you let something move into your home that upsets you, 
um, or is that uncomfortable, then you're never going to find comfort again. So don't allow it. Do not allow it. Your, your home is the place where you recoup, where you rest, and where you find peace. Uh, Mary from Arizona is to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. How is it possible lingering spirits may at times remain on earth to haunt houses? Well, I'm not going to say they'll haunt houses, but there are familiar spirits. Uh, for every negative, there is a positive. The opposite of that coin is we have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit always comforts us and gives us power over any familiar spirit. You don't have to, I, I mean, evil spirit should run from you. Uh, when, and, and, and I promise you they will. When, when you have the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit, then certainly there's no evil spirit that wants to be around you, especially if you're not afraid to utilize that power to cast them back where they came from. They haul out. I'm out of time. Hey, you know what? I love you all because you enjoy studying our Father's Word. Most of all, God loves you for it. Hey, it makes His day. It's the letter He sent to you. And when you make His day, you think He's not going to make yours? You bet He is. Why? Because He loves you. We're brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, you bless God. He will always bless you. One thing most important, though, you listen to me and you listen good. You stay in his word every day. In his word, it's a good day, even with trouble. You know why? Because Jesus, Yeshua, he is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you. The Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible is an invaluable tool to the serious Bible student. The Strong's Concordance lists every word used in the Bible and every passage where the word utilized may be found in the scriptures. With the assistance of a reference numbering system, the English reader may easily translate any word back to the original Hebrew, Chaldee, or Greek in which God's word was written. The Companion Bible is a unique study Bible. In addition to the text of the King James Version Bible, an extra wide margin contains a wealth of information not found in other Bibles. A system of structures or outlines employed by the Companion Bible will allow the readers to rightly divide the Bible. The use of these structures help the reader follow the subject matter, and therefore they are critical to an understanding of God's Word. The 198 appendixes found in the Bible cover a wide variety of topics and information which will enlighten your studies. The Companion Bible and Strongest Concordance are a must for the serious Bible student.
Abbott, Arkansas, this is Shepherd's Chapel with Pastor Arnold Murray. Join with us now as Pastor Murray takes you on a book by book, chapter by chapter, line by line study of God's Word. Now, here is Pastor Murray. Praise God, I'm glad you all could make it. Second part of the discussion, God's politics. That would upset a few because they wouldn't understand what the word politics really means or, or political, better said. It means the, 